Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at buffers and pH calculations. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to do the following. Be able to recall what a buffer solution does and give examples. Identify suitable reagents to make a buffer. Explain how an acidic and basic buffer maintain pH and also calculate the pH of an acidic buffer solution. First up then we're going to see what a buffer solution is and some example buffer solutions. So a buffer solution is a solution that resists change in pH. So it doesn't actually stop change but it resists change in pH when a small amount of acid or alkali is added. And we're going to have a look at how this works in just a couple of moments time. So we'll be able to explain that in a little bit more detail. There are many examples of buffer solutions. But some of the more common ones are in biological systems where having a constant pH is important, particularly uh, for things like enzyme actions or interactions with tissues. For this reason, we often find buffers in things like shampoos, and that's because your hair follicles will actually be slightly smoother or rougher depending on the pH so it's important that the shampoo has a pH which is alkaline and therefore they add an alkaline buffer to shampoos. They're also used in things like biological washing powders where you may have a enzyme action so the enzyme will only work at specific pHs and therefore buffers are added to that biological washing powder in order to maintain the pH. And also in the blood where it's important to keep the pH there around about 7.4 and therefore there's a natural buffer within your blood to maintain the pH just above pH 7. All of these are simply examples of buffer solutions. Importantly, what we need to be able to explain here is A, some examples, but importantly, how these buffers work and how we can also can, uh, create chemical buffers. So let's have a look at making acidic buffers. We said before that a buffer solution is one in which resists change. So if we just recall what our equation is here for a pH, it's the pH is equal to the minus log 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. What this means is in order to keep a solution at a constant pH, we have to somehow maintain the hydrogen ion concentration. And there's two ways that we can do that for acidic buffers. The two ways we can make an acidic buffer are either we can have a strong base and react that with a weak acid as number one, or we can have the salt of the weak acid and a weak acid. And we'll look at both of these in a little bit more detail when we talk about how we calculate the pH. But these are the two ways of creating a acidic buffer solution. So how do acidic buffers work? Well let's take the imaginary example here where we've got a weak acid HA. This could be any acid, we'll also perhaps include here the discussion with ethanoic acid. So we'll also include here in our discussion 
ethanoic acid to use as an example. And we'll have the salt here, which is ethanoate iron plus the hydrogen iron. I've actually drawn them the other way around there. Now, if this is just the weak acid, what we have to start off with is we have lots of acid and we have small amounts of the hydrogen ion and also of the salt. What we're going to look at first is a situation if, if we haven't made a buffer solution. Okay, so let's imagine that we add some H plus ions to the solution. Well, what would happen is the H plus would react with the salt of the acid and would shift the equilibrium to form the acid again. In other words, it would shift the equilibrium to the left hand side. Now, the issue here is because we've not actually made a buffer, there is only small amount of A minus that the A minus here or the salt would get consumed very quickly and therefore there wouldn't be very much salt to mop up the hydrogen ions and actually the hydrogen ion concentration would increase quite quickly and therefore the pH would change and there would be no buffer action. Therefore in order to make a buffer what we have to do is to increase the concentration here or the moles of the A minus. How we do that? Well, they're the two examples we talked about at the beginning. We can add a strong base to the weak acid, or we can add, simply add the salt of the weak acid to the weak acid in order to increase this value. What we're going to look at now is actually what happens when we've made the buffer solution. Okay, so let's this time think about what happens if we've actually got a buffer solution. So a buffer solution means we've got large amounts or lots of the acid and we've also got lots of the A- minus because we've actually reacted the salt of the weak acid with the weak acid or the strong base and the weak acid. And we've got a small amount of the H plus ions which is making it acidic. This time then we're going to see what happens if we add acid when we've got lots of the salt. So we add a small amount of the A minus, oh sorry, the, the H plus, the acid. And so the H plus and A minus react, which shifts the equilibrium to the left hand side. The result of this is that we reduce the H plus concentration from that that we added, and therefore we maintain the hydrogen ion concentration, and therefore we maintain the pH. To an approximately constant value. So we have to have lots of A minus. Let's have a look this time if we had some base or some OH minus. So we add OH minus. The OH minus is then going to react with the hydrogen ions to make water, because that's just a neutralization. As this happens, the equilibrium here of the acid and the salt is going to shift to the right hand side to produce more hydrogen ions. This is going to increase the concentration of hydrogen ions. 
in order to maintain the hydrogen ion concentration because those hydrogen ions are being consumed by the, the water. Sorry, that should be OH- minus at the top there. Therefore, maintaining a constant pH. In summary then, I'll just produce here this small flow chart just to talk about the two possible scenarios. Briefly then, before we go on to look at basic buffers, let's look at how we could make the acidic buffer. Let's imagine we had ethanoic acid. So if we had ethanoic acid, we could add to this the salt of the acid. So we could add sodium ethanoate. So we could add sodium ethanoate, that would be the salt of the acid to ethanoic acid, or we could add sodium hydroxide, the strong base, to the ethanoic acid. If we were adding sodium hydroxide, we would have to ensure that we didn't add too much and that the pH remained below 7 in order for it to remain a buffer. If the pH went above 7, then it would no longer be a buffer, an acidic buffer solution. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the basic buffers. So making basic buffers. Again, we've got two ways of doing this. We can either add ammonia or an amine because these are our weak bases and a strong acid or again we could use ammonia or the respective amine and the salt that is the ammonium salt in order to make our basic buffers. And again, we'll look at those once we've been through how a basic buffer works. So this time we're going to look at the example here with ammonia. And if we were using just ammonia, we would have lots of ammonia and we would have small amounts of NH4 plus and small amounts of OH minus. However, because we're going to be making a buffer, we're actually going to use lots of the ammonium salt here. So I'm going to change this value to lots, otherwise the buffer action doesn't work. The ammonium here is created, of course, either by the addition of the actual ammonium salt to the ammonia solution, or by forming with the strong acid to make the ammonium salt. That's why we've got lots for this buffer solution. And again, let's look at our two possibilities. If we add H+, plus, well, in theory, the pH should change. However, if we add pH in, uh, if we add H+, plus in this instance, that's going to react with the OH-, minus, which is going to generate water again. And since we've got a lot of NH3 and water about, that's going to shift our equilibrium to the right-hand side from this equation here. So it's going to shift it to the right, and that's going to maintain the OH- minus concentration. Therefore, it's going to maintain here the H plus concentration and therefore the pH. If on the other hand we add a small amount of OH minus well then we're going to shift the equilibrium in the opposite direction. So the equilibrium is going to shift 
to the left hand side. Because we've got a large amount of NH4+, plus, because the NH4+, plus and the OH- minus will go to make water and NH3. This will maintain the OH- minus concentration, which in turn will maintain the concentration of the hydrogen ions, and therefore, finally, the pH. Again, so here we're seeing the pH remaining almost constant. It's resisting change, and that is what we're describing as our buffer action. Again, then, here we've got our basic buffer summary, where we can look at acid added and base added, and our two different routes to maintaining the pH. I'm just going to leave that up there while we think about the two ways of making a basic buffer. And this time we're going to go for something, let's say, methylamine. So CH3, NH2. And how we could make that buffer? Well, the equilibrium reaction would be like this. And we're trying to make methyl ammonium salt here, plus the OH minus. So to do that, to the methyl amine, we could either add a strong acid. So we could add hydrochloric acid. And in this sense, we would make methyl ammonium chloride, which would look like this, CH3, NH3 plus Cl minus methyl ammonium chloride or we could simply add to the solution some methyl ammonium chloride either of those ways number one or number two at adding that to methyl amine would make the basic buffer of course once again if we added the strong acid we have to ensure that we don't add too much and then make the solution acidic. As soon as the solution would be acidic, it would no longer be a basic buffer. Okay, we're now going to move on to looking at the calculations of the pH of an acidic buffer. Calculating the pH of an acidic buffer here. Now, because we're dealing essentially with weak acids, our two equations that we need to be interested in now, the pH is equal to the minus log 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration, because we're looking at pH, and then our acid dissociation constant. What that means is, in all of these equations, we're interested in the finding out the amount of salt we have, the amount of hydrogen ions, and also the concentration of the acid. Since one of our ways of making a buffer solution is to react a weak acid with a strong base, then all we're actually doing here is we're completing the mixing a weak acid with a strong base calculations always for when HA is in excess. And we've actually looked at this already in one of our earlier videos. And if you follow the link, that's just popping up now, you'll be able to see how we do these calculations. Just to walk you through the important steps, we calculate the moles of the weak acid, then we calculate the moles of the strong base that has been added. We work out if the weak acid or the strong base are in excess, but if we're talking about a acidic buffer, then we know that the acid is going to be in excess and then we simply move on to our calculations for when the acid is in excess where we calculate the moles of the acid left then we calculate the concentration of the acid and the salt we use ka to find the concentration of the h plus ions and then we calculate the ph so our second method is slightly different 
but thankfully a little bit easier as well. If we got a weak acid and the salt of the acid reacted together to make the buffer solution, then we follow these steps. First of all, we calculate the moles of salt added, that's the A minus. Then we calculate the concentration of the salt added, and then we use Ka to find the concentration of the hydrogen ions, and finally we calculate the pH. We're just going to go on and look at how we use this second example here to calculate the pH of a acidic buffer. Here we go then. Let's look at calculating the pH of an acidic buffer and we're going to use the weak acid and the salt of the acid method. So we've got a buffer solution was made by adding 2.05 grams of sodium ethanoate to 0.5 dm cubed of 0.01 mole decimeter cubed of ethanoic acid. Calculate the pH of this solution and we're given a Ka value. So remember we're interested here to get to the concentration of the H plus ions because we're going to use that to work out the pH. And what we therefore know is that the Ka acid dissociation constant is going to be equal to the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt of the acid. Note in the question that we're given a value for Ka and we've also got a value for the concentration of the ethanoic acid and since this is going to remain unchanged because we're adding the salt the only thing that we've got to find out first is the concentration of A minus. So in this question we're going to follow our steps here to calculate the moles of the salt added and here we're given a grammage of sodium ethanoate you could equally be given a solution and need to work out uh, perhaps a concentration added. However, we're going to use the grams here. So the first thing to do is to work out the MR here of sodium ethanoate. And note that we do have to include the value for the sodium ion here. So it's sodium ethanoate. And the total MR here for sodium ethanoate is 82.1 grams per mole. From here we can work out the moles of sodium ethanoate by doing the mass divided by the MR. So we've got 2.05 grams over 82.1, which is giving us a total moles of 0 0.0250 mole. The concentration then of the sodium ethanoate is going to be equal to the volume times by sorry the moles divided by the volume times by a thousand and in this case we've actually got the volume in decimeters cubed so the concentration here is simply going to be the moles divided by the volume I don't need my factor of a thousand because we're not in centimeters cubed so here it's simply going to be the moles divided by the volume 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.5 which gives me a concentration of sodium ethanoate to be 0 0.0500 moles dm minus 3. I now have a value for A minus which I was interested in up here and so I can work out the concentration of the hydrogen ions by putting in a value for Ka, multiplying that by the ratio of the acid, which is here, 0 0.01 moles per decimeter cubed, divided by 0.0. 5 moles per decimeter cube which is the concentration of the salt which we've just worked out and this comes out at 3.48 times 10 to the minus 6 and we then simply put that in our calculators to work out the pH remember it's the concentration of the hydrogen ion concentration We've got 3.48 times 10 to the minus 6, which is going to give you a pH here to two decimal places of 
So you should now be able to work out acidic buffer pHs when adding a salt to the acid. And also if you look at the previous video, I'll put the link in again here, then you should be able to find out how to do the weak acid with the strong base. Okay, so that's the end of the buffers and pH calculations video. By now you should be able to recall what a buffer solution does and give examples, identify suitable reagents to make a buffer solution, explain how a buffer solution works, and finally calculate the pH of an acidic buffer solution. That's all for now, and I look forward to seeing you next time.